Hi, in this video I'm going to explain the key features of the Hertzsprung-Russell diagram. This chart was first created about 100 years ago by two astronomers called, well, Hertzsprung and Russell. The y-axis is a logarithmic scale of luminosity where the power output of our sun is defined as a luminosity of L equals 1 and the scale then uh, increases uh, logarithmically with the most powerful stars towards the stop of the top of the diagram and the least powerful stars towards the bottom of the diagram. The x-axis describes the temperature of the star but the axis is reversed with the hottest stars here about 30,000 Kelvin towards the left and the cooler stars towards the right. Streaking across the middle of our diagram, we have the main sequence. This is the most populous group of stars. Our sun, by definition, sits somewhere in the middle of the diagram. Uh, all stars in the main sequence are stable and undergoing nuclear fusion to turn hydrogen into helium. These are middle-aged stars. Towards the right of the diagram, we have the red giants. They form from low or intermediate mass stars after the hydrogen in their core has been exhausted. Although they are cooler than the main sequence stars, they have a higher luminosity than many of them because they are so much larger. When a red giant exhausts its fuel, it sheds its outer layer and leaves behind a hot core as a white dwarf. The white dwarfs appear in the bottom left of the Hertzsprung-Russell diagram because despite their high temperature, their small size means they have a low luminosity. Red supergiants are found above the red giants. They are relatively cool, but are quite enormous. Their radius can be up to a thousand times greater than our sun. Red supergiants form from very large main sequence stars. In the gap between the red giants, the red supergiants and the main sequence, we have what is known as the instability strip. This strip contains several classes of variable stars, including Cepheid variable stars. Finally, we can add diagonal lines to our Hertzsprung-Russell diagram. These are lines of constant radius, so allow us to give us some sort of sense of scale. For stars on the main sequence, there is a correlation between their mass and their luminosity. The higher the mass of a star, the more power it will emit. This makes sense, but the exact relationship is that the luminosity L is proportional to the mass raised to the power of 3.5. For example, if star B is uh, twice the mass of star A, how many times bigger will its luminosity be? Well, its luminosity will be 11.3 times the luminosity of star A. Thank you for watching this video from Cowan Physics. If you found it useful, please like, subscribe, and visit cowanphysics.com.